Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing the Terrible Regions of Wu Let's Talk Lore series with episode 5 titled Zhuge Dan's Rebellion. Before we get started, here's the answer to our trivia question from the end of our last episode, and be sure to stay tuned until the end of this episode for a brand new trivia question. Now last time we covered the terrible transition from Sun Jun to Sun Chen, as after a brief but bloody civil war, the kingdom of Wu and its second emperor Sun Liang welcomed its third regent in Sun Chen. And the first order of business for Sun Chen, right on the heels of winning the civil war for regency in 257, would be the third rebellion of Huainan, as the Wei general, Zhuge Dan, openly rebelled against the Wei court, controlled by its regent, Sima Zhao. As we'll have a separate Let's Talk Lore series that will cover this rebellion from Zhuge Dan and Wei's perspective, the discussion here in this series will pertain mainly around the Wu reinforcement led by Sun Chen, and not the rebellion itself. Now, unlike the previous Huainan rebellions led by Guan Qiujian, where the kingdom of Wu was not initially informed, Zhuge Dan immediately involved the kingdom of Wu as he would send his zhang shi, or military advisor, Wu Gang, to inform the new regent, Sun Chen, of his intent to rebel and defect to Wu, and to gain their trust, and more importantly, to receive military aid and reinforcement from the kingdom of Wu, Zhuge Dan also sent his only son, Zhuge Jing, to Wu as a political hostage. Now, the Wu side was certain that Zhuge Dan's defection was genuine, because aside from receiving his only son, Zhuge Dan also kicked off his rebellion by killing his civil counterpart, Yue Chen, who was the Wei Yang province prefect at this time. So knowing that this would be a massive opportunity for Wu, Sun Chen immediately organized for a vanguard reinforcement army of 30,000 troops, led by generals Quan Yi, Quan Duan, Tang Zi, Wang Ze, and Wen Qing to rush to Zhuge Dan's side in Shouchun. Now this reinforcement lineup can be broken down into three main groups. First, there was the Quan clan retinues that made up the majority of the reinforcement army. Quan Yi, who is the third son of the former Da Sima, or Supreme Military Commander Quan Chong, is also the first son of Princess Sun Luban, and thus also the son who inherited all his father Quan Chong's titles and more importantly, Quan Chong's personal retinues upon Quan Chong's passing in the year 249. And given the high status of Quan Chong in the Wu army and his and now Quan Yi's personal retinue, definitely made up the biggest portion of this 30,000 reinforcement army. In addition to Quan Yi's retinue, Quan Duan, who was Quan Yi's older cousin, and the most experienced member of the Quan clan at this time, also no doubt contributed a sizable retinue. And even without having the exact numbers recorded down in history, I think it is safe to assume that over half of the 30,000 reinforcement troops would belong to the Quan clan, as numerous other minor Quan clan relatives also took part in this reinforcement. Then the next group would be the senior Wu generals, such as Tang Zi and Wang Ze. Tang Zi in particular had been serving Wu for over three decades now, ever since his initial defection from Wei back in 225, and we have previously mentioned his reinforcement role in the victorious Battle of Dongxing and in the naval incursion right before Sun Jun's death. Lastly, there is also General Wen Qing the unpopular, recently defected Wei general, and the former Wei prefect of the Yang province. For this campaign, Wen Qing and his two sons will act as local guides for the Wu vanguard reinforcement army as he returns to his old hunt in Shouchun to reunite with his personal rival and former colleague in Zhuge Dan. Now, because of how early Zhuge Dan informed the Wu side and the speed of Sun Chen's response, this Wu vanguard force of 30,000 troops safely arrives at Shouchun long before the Wei armies could put Shouchun under siege. So without much resistance, the Wu army marched under the cover of Mount Bagong to enter into Shouchun 
from the northeast to rendezvous with Zhuge Dan's army and greatly bolstering the defenses of Shouchun. Furthermore, Sun Chen also organized a second reinforcement army, this time led by General Zhu Yi, who had just taken control of Xiakou. Now, Zhu Yi was at Xiakou because he was sent there by Sun Chen to kill General Sun Yi, who unfortunately got wrapped up in the civil war due to the fact that he was the brother-in-law to both Teng Yin and Lu Zhu, who competed against Sun Chen for the region position. Sun Yi wisely defected and fled to Wei before Zhu Yi's arrival, but with Zhuge Dan's rebellion and defection happening immediately after, Zhu Yi now got the opportunity to march through a largely undefended Yang province to take a forward position at Anfeng County, just west of Shouchun, with an army of 30,000 troops as his position now acted more or less like a deterrent against any direct way attacks against Shouchun proper. And it would be Zhu Yi's position that would come under attack first as the Wei army, totaling more than 260,000 strong across all fronts, would send General Zhou Tai, who was the prefect of the Yan province, to lead a small roaming strike force against Zhu Yi, while the majority of the Wei army, under the command of Sima Zhao and Wang Ji, would remain outside of Shouchun to complete their encirclement and siege of the city. Now, Zhou Tai, who had the same pronunciation but different surname as the more famous Wu general, Zhou Tai, was another Sima clan loyalist who took over as the prefect of the Yan province after the previous prefect, Deng Ai, was summoned back west to take command of the Wei Western Garrison in order to fend off Jiang Wei's increasingly successful northern expeditions, especially after the recent defeat of the Yong province prefect Wang Jing. As Deng Ai's replacement, Zhou Tai shared a very similar backstory as Deng Ai, as both of them were minor regional officials who rose up the political ladder entirely due to Sima Yi. In Deng Ai's case, he was a minor Tuntian farm official who fortunately got discovered by Sima Yi in Luoyang while on one of his annual farm production reporting assignments to the capital. Likewise, Zhou Tai was a minor Jin province official back during the early days of Cao Pi's reign who was sent by his boss, the Jin province prefect Pei Qian, to help coordinate with Sima Yi's garrison inside the city of Wan when Sima Yi was first put in charge of the Jin province military affairs all the way back at the beginning of the Wei dynasty. In those first few meetings while working to help Sima Yi's army get settled in the Jin province, Zhou Tai's talent captivated Sima Yi. So after putting down Meng Da's rebellion in Xincheng, Sima Yi suggested to the Wei imperial court to promote Zhou Tai as Xincheng's new administrator. Unfortunately, Zhou Tai's mother, father, and grandfather would all pass away in short succession before his promotion went through, which meant that according to Confucian tradition of tomb guarding, Zhou Tai needed to commit the next nine years of his life to tomb guarding for his three deceased elders, as you need to have three years of tomb guarding for each of your close kins. Hearing this, Sima Yi demonstrated how highly he viewed Zhou Tai as Sima Yi would keep the position of administrator of Xincheng vacant for all nine years, only sending minor officials to fulfill the duties of the administrator. And exactly 36 days after Zhou Tai finished serving his nine years tomb guarding duty, Sima Yi remembered to officially promote Zhou Tai to the position as he had promised nearly a decade before. So from this, it's not hard to see how highly Sima Yi saw Zhou Tai and how Zhou Tai would become fiercely loyal to the Sima clan. Now years later, having been promoted to the prefect of the Yan province and given command of the strike team against Zhu Yi's position, Zhou Tai would get to repay the trust that Sima Yi had once placed in him, as his army would clash with Zhu Yi's army in open battle at a mountain valley named Yang Yuan just west of Shouchun, where Zhou Tai would soundly defeat Zhu Yi's forces, killing over 2,000 Wu troops, 
preventing a relief to the siege of Shouchun and forcing Zhu Yi's army to retreat south to a position at Lijiang, directly south of Shouchun. With this initial defeat, Sun Chen and the Kingdom of Wu would respond in force as he would now personally lead a third Wu reinforcement army to come to the aid of Shouchun and to find out the result of the Wu involvement in the Third Rebellion of Huainan. Come back next time as we'll continue our series with episode 6 titled A Costly Reinforcement. Hopefully y'all have enjoyed this episode enough to consider subscribing to the channel for more content on Three Kingdoms history, or simply support the channel by leaving a comment below, or just by hitting the like button. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye!